cataractcoach.com, realigning a torque guy well without viscoelastic. So an interesting case for a patient with irregular stigmatism. Our guest third is Dr. Alex Abdo Martins, a fantastic surgeon from Brazil. Love watching his videos, watching him operate. So here's the patient, 82-year-old female. Look at the refraction, high hyperope. And the right eye's got three diopters of sill, and the left eye has about one diopter of sill. Otherwise, pretty normal, other than that high hyperopia. Some cataract. Now, here's the topography. It looks a little bit weird. The, you can see the bow ties are not exactly symmetric there, especially that right eye. It reads about three diopters. And the owl master says it's 3.9 diopters. The axial length machine has measured at about four diopters, and about both, say, 13 degrees uh, that's pretty good for a steep axis. Okay, again, a tomography, OPD scan, pretty similar. The tomography says that the galleries is 26. The NIDEC OPD scan says 13. So we're pretty similar now in these devices. So although it's an unusual and irregular stigmatism, Dr. Martins treats this patient with a torque guy well. And then the pre-op refraction, the topography, the Galilee, the OPD scan, our master, axial scan, they're all very similar in the axis and the cylinder. I'm about three diopters steep at around 13 degrees. So here's the chosen lens. It's a Technus ZCT 525 28 diopter lens. And it says to line it up at about the 11 degree mark. That's all pretty consistent with what was already measured. So day eight post-op, 20 out of 100. Look at the refraction. Whoa. Plus a half, minus two at 145. But the lens looks like it's really on target. But can it be better? Patient's pretty happy as is. So here you go. You can see measuring it exactly 11 degrees. The lens is at the intended axis, literally right on target. So going to astigmatismfix.com from Jason Berdahl. Smart man. It says rotating the torque lens. A little bit clockwise should minimize the astigmatism. The ideal axis is a little different. So I've sped up the video here. Ink marks are at 25 degrees, and he wants to rotate the lens. So how do you rotate this lens? Well, there are a couple things. You need to have the eye inflated. And so there are two options here. Since it's only 10 days out, your incision should open up pretty easily. So what I would tend to do is use my IA probe to go inside the eye and inflate in the, the eye. Or if you're using bimanual, you can use your infusion just to get the infusion to BSS. I agree you don't want to put viscoelastic in the eye because if you do, it's going to cause the lens to slip more. It's going to have to be removed, all that stuff. So here you can see he's losing a, losing a little bit of fluid, but then you can just refill the anterior chamber with balanced salt solution, which you'll do now, to reinflate. Good move. And then he'll re-rotate the lens. And now this is the ideal time to do it. The patient's only a week or two or 10 days out of surgery. This is an easy time to re-rotate a lens. And so by using those calculators at stigmatismfix.com, you can say, oh, let me rotate this to the appropriate axis. And that should really make a world of difference. So yes, there's an additional maneuver here of having to go back inside the eye to get this lens rotated. But I think it's going to be worth it for this patient. So you can see he's doing a really nice job back and forth. Take your time. Put in more BSS if you need to. Get that AC inflated again. But I do agree with the concept of avoiding using too much uh, viscoelastic or any viscoelastic at all. I think you'll be better off. So again, the other options have a second pair of adhesives and just put an infusion port in the eye, a bimanual infusion port. That'll make it easy as well. So getting that lens rotated a little bit more. Now... The lens is like this. All these single pieces of acrylic lenses are easier to rotate clockwise because of the haptic orientation. Much tougher to rotate counterclockwise. So again, more BSS going inside of the eye here to get that thing full. So what's the result? Result is fantastic. Let me show you. Day six after the rotation, 2030 now. Now look at the new refraction. Minus a quarter, minus a quarter. Patient is ecstatic, super happy patient and a happy surgeon. So a beautiful technique here. I like it. Thank you, Dr. Martin, for sending me such a great video. And here's the post op result. Even the autorefractor is happy in this case. Let's look at this scan a little bit more in detail. So all on the right side, I put in yellow the IOL mapping. And you can see the yellow arrow shows you the steep axis of the toric IOL. So that image is of the IOL. The middle one, where it's in green, says corneal map. That's the cornea. And you can see the green arrow is showing you where the steep axis is. So look at the steep axis of the IOL 
and the steep axis of the cornea, and you can see how those two are going to eliminate each other, neutralize each other. And you can see underneath that yellow area, it says the internal or the IOL one is minus 3.5 drops at 22 degrees. The cornea is minus 2.6 at 110 degrees. And the total is only minus a quarter of still at 37 degrees. That's fantastic. Now, the cornea and the internal look a little different because remember, a vertex distance. The IOL is the IOL plane, the cornea is the corneal plane. And circled there all the way on the left side in red circle, that's the refraction. Plano minus a quarter of 37. Amazing. And the map above it where I have the blue writing says total IRX, that's the prescription of the eye there. So even in this case of an irregular cornea, this patient had a fantastic visual outcome. So thank you, Dr. Martins. This is a really great learning case.